Darren, are you there, mate? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, I think we're live. I'm just going to... Um, it's all looking good so far. I'm just going to make you go into full screen mode. And uh, there we are. So, hello, Darren. Hello. What are we doing, How is mate? Everybody? What's going to happen? What? We, what? <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna draw something. <laughs> so I was gonna ask people, would they like me to do a character or a, a vehicle? But I'm not on my usual PC because my PC died today, so. I don't have my 3D stuff, so I'm going to do a character. <laughs> so listen, folks, if uh, if you're at the moment, because we're in uh, full screen mode, I've not got access to the um, the Discord uh, questions section. This is why we've we've uh, we've said in the stream chat to move over to any questions that you might have. Put them in the um, the Twitch chat because I've got access. I can see that live. Um, so if you've got any questions or anything that you'd like. Uh, to ask Darren, um, then uh, do it. Uh, get get some questions in there. I'll I'll relay them to Darren. Um, in a little bit, we're gonna we'll probably invite uh, maybe a little bit further down the line. We might invite some of our other artists that are that are around into the into the chat room. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, take it away, Darren. What what are you uh, what you what's in your head at the minute? What are you drawing now? I do one of my characters for tribal and it's probably going to have some robotic bits some other things the things i'd like to mix around um the way i usually do characters well the way i do anything to be honest it's the same for characters environments props vehicles whatever um this is going to sound sarcastic but it's not <laughs> is to think first for a good long while just to get like a good idea in your head roughly of what you want to explore and what you want to draw because if you've got something even if it's fairly vague you'll be it's easier to find things that way than it is to just go out something blind to try and find something for me personally anyway um and also you can kind of root, like, get rid of bad ideas already just in the thinking stage in your head. You can set yourself up for failure or you can set yourself up for success pretty much straight away. Like, let's say you're going to cross two things, which is a typical design thing. Like, oh, I don't know, deep sea fish crossed with robotics. I mean, you can already think, you know, that could get some good results. Whereas, I don't know, something boring like wood and, uh, I don't know, a cow, you're not going to get much stuff there. So thinking early on to get something good that just sounds good and sparks your ideas off in your head is invaluable, I think. It's how I start everything. And so for this dude, I'm thinking, I've been a bit obsessed with bird characters lately like these dudes. And so I'm going to do another bird style character, but this time more heavily crossed with robotics. So kind of like a blend between the bird and the robots. And to me, that sounds pretty interesting. So I'll just like start sketching away. If anyone's got questions, fire away. I've and got, I'll try and explain things as I do them. I've got a couple for you already, Badge. Badge. Sorry, Daz. <laughs> Badge has got a better beard. Yeah, we've got Baz and Badge and Daz and it's all, yeah. We, we like single syllable names, don't we, I, I imagine. Um, uh, one of the questions that came through, uh, I think it was actually from Amber. How do you, um, the, you've got like quite a distinctive uh, colour palette. What what sort of yeah. made you think about that colour? What sort of, how did you get inspired by that colour palette? What, how would you go about choosing the colours? What are your thoughts on colour? Um, I like to use colour very very sparingly like i'll use it as a if, if you look at my stuff a lot of it is kind of desaturated even the bright stuff it's a lot of desaturated grays yeah. and then there's just pops of super saturated blue and the yellow so it's i use it very sparingly like i use color as like a weapon almost yeah yeah so i'll and i use it in the same way as i use ratios in everything else that i do um i'm a huge believer in 
not doing anything 50 50. so like that that comes down to every aspect of the design like if you take this robot dude it's the shadowing is not split up 50 50. it's probably 60 40 on this dude maybe 70 30. yeah same on this dude it's 30 percent shadow 70 percent light it's the same with the color pops it's like 70 percent desaturated color and then 30 percent pops of bright color where i want the eye to be usually is where i put it yeah yeah but uh yeah those kind of ratios i do it in everything like even this character here that i'm sketching out i mean it's super rough but already because it's 50 50 like that with the big round on the top and the thin on the bottom the round and thin is good because it breaks up that one big shape but because it's 50 on the top and 50 on the bottom i'm not a fan of it so what i would probably do is either reduce the top down and just change the ratios that way this is lagging for some reason so i'll just redraw it <laughs> I'll just I'll just let, let people know what's up. But Darren just bought an incredible uh, rig, uh, com, incredible computer, and it, it just blew up on him. So now he's using a friend's <laughs> computer, and has very very rapidly reinstalled things and, and got him, got to get ready to go for this. So it's been a little bit stressy today. We were worried. We thought we wouldn't get to see you. Um, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> How did you what what where where did tribal come from? We had another question like just tell us it was like just tell us about tribal. You know what um what how, how um, did you have a, a crazy dream or you know how did he, where, where did you get the inspiration from? It comes down to like one of my art heroes, and if you look at my work, it's no it's no shock. Is uh, Mike Mignola. I love Hellboy. I love his art style. I love everything. Um, and he always said that the reason he loves Hellboy. Is because he just invented a universe where he would never get tired of drawing shit within it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for him, that's obviously like uh, occult things and scary things and Dracula and vampires and all that stuff. Yeah. But for me, it's always robots, Wild West stuff, samurais and uh, animals. And because I like all those things. Oh, and like obviously literal African tribal uh communities and people and things like that and because i like all that stuff i just came up with a world where i could use everything that i like so i'd never get tired of drawing yeah and creating I, you know what i've world. never heard anybody say that before i mean uh, we're always encouraging students to sort of you know do go design the stuff that you uh, initially you know before you you kind of force yeah. to design stuff by your, your art director just do what you love and uh, whatever you've got a passion for um I tell you what's I tell you what's an interesting one for for those listening is is how difficult it can be for students to be actually given complete uh, artistic freedom. We we get that on the in our, our third third year honors year. You know we say, hey, do what you like, and they've actually yeah. got to think. You know what is it that they like? You know, um, so that finding that thing that really fires you up that makes you want to you know get get excited about it and get up in the morning to do it. Um, that's what that's what everybody really needs to be looking for in that things that makes you want to do it and it doesn't feel like work yeah exactly that's i mean because we all go through like burnout or times where we're not super into like the work we're doing but having a personal project to always have on the go i find it's helped me massively in my uh in my career and most of the like my friends in the industry and what have you they're the same they always have a, their own like personal things that they're always chipping away at just because that's the only place you're going to get a true creative outlet for that's 100 percent you yeah because yeah. when you're working for clients it's all the client's needs is like the absolute paramount and i've worked with a lot of clients where you know they don't pick the designs that i've done for them that i like the most like the stuff because you'll obviously you send in quite a few ideas for designs and so and they'll end up picking things that i mean whilst i still like them they're not my favorites and you know you can't let that kind of stuff get you down that's why you have a personal project where you you can always pick your favorites yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is kind of where i am 
We had um, a question just come in about, um, we've heard a lot over the last couple of afternoons about the importance of reference material. Yeah. Um, and we've had a question about so where does, we've heard so much about it, the importance of it. How heavily does the use of reference material sort of feature in your work? And if it does, at what point, where, where, what does it relate to the most? Is there any, what, do, you, do you collect a lot of ref? I used to back in the day. Now it, it's more on a per job basis. If I'm doing client work, I always gather ref yeah, every yeah. time. But for tribal stuff now, so much of it is in my visual library, which I'm always expanding on by watching like documentaries and yeah. like looking at other artwork, looking at nature and all that thing. When it comes down to ref for tribal, for me, it's nearly always nature. Everything's pretty much based on some idea will come from nature and I'll build on it. You see it a lot in my neck, uh, mechs and things like this thing. Yeah. It was a dung, I saw a dung beetle like a, and I thought, wouldn't that be awesome if like the locomotion was reversed? Yeah, yeah. And that got me thinking, you know, let's do that. Make that into a mech as opposed to just like the usual standard tank mech that people yeah. draw. Well, you go, folks, you've heard it here that David Attenborough is a key influence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does. Keep watching He's the best. Nature, keep watching those nature programs. Yeah, one of the things that inspires me a lot is uh, is plant life, um, um, leaves and foliage and, the, you know, the kind of curves that you get on, um, on, on trees and plants and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, nature. Get out there in the park, you know, um, but stay, you know, distanced from each other, folks, you know, be safe. So this is messing up and I don't know why. There we go, that'll fix it. Did you, um, did you uh, draw from an early age? Have you always been into your drawing? Yeah, always, pretty much, since I was a kid. Um, and, like, I, I grew up not knowing what I wanted to do. And then I've heard a few people mention it. I saw an article in Edge magazine by Feng Zhu. Um, yeah, yeah. And it had his concept art, and I was like, what the fuck is this? This is what I want to do, because I love games. And ever since I saw those the, the article, then I like I kind of knew. And that was what I did from then on. Because I'm pretty much self-taught in what I do. Um, yeah, about this drawing. Um, like, it's at a place now where I can build on it. Um, but like I was saying before, like in terms of interest in proportion and silhouette, that's always my main focus first. After the idea, it's silhouette, proportion, cool shapes and how they play with each other and, and their relationships and ultimately the contrast of everything and the rhythms. Yeah. But it's like this dude, I, I know I'm going to make him a bird. Would it be cool if he had the short beak? Or the long beak yeah, yeah but i know that because he's far like kind of round this is almost like a repeat of the same set of shapes right so putting a longer beak on the top just breaks up the silhouette in a much more interesting way yeah for me yeah and it's it's just i'm constantly making these like lots and lots of like these small decisions as we go that add up to the whole and i don't really worry about the quality of the drawing because <laughs> my style is i mean look at it it's really messy and it's quick and it's yeah it's not particularly refined as an art style so i don't really worry about the the uh the quality of the art whilst i'm i'm working on it i worry about the design yeah, I have, I have regular discussions with students about um, how they draw, how they actually put uh, put marks on paper, and I'm a kind of scribbler, kind of like what you're doing there, because I kind of get that gestalt moment. You know, if I put plenty of lines down, one of them will speak to me. You know, I'll actually yeah. pick, help pick a line, um, and that really works for me. Like we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of you know the scrib scribbling across um, a mirror mirrored axis, and then just yeah, yeah. you know see what happens, see what pops out for you. It's amazing how you can see faces in scribble, isn't it? You know, um, so I I really like the the uh, this the put plenty of lines down and then and then you'll eventually you'll see 
you know in that chaos you get a lot the lines sort of emerge for you don't they and then other people yeah. like to walk the line don't they what really almost like their brain is just like you know a few millimeters ahead of the line and knows where to go um but yeah that's that what you're doing that works for me yeah another like i'm i'm quite often jealous of like the people who can do really tight line art work and can still have it feel like loose and alive because i really like loose sketchy alive yeah. stuff yeah yeah but then you get people like like callum watt who just does the most incredible line work but it's and it's super tight but at the same time it's just still full of life and full of energy yeah and that to me is like that's magic <laughs> and that because i can't personally do that and like this dude here the line it all starts with line drawings but in the end and it, it does look more like a drawing than a painting but as you'll see as it progresses it, it it basically becomes like a cross between the two where i don't care what ends up as line i don't care what ends up as paint just as long as it looks good kind of thing yeah yeah and this dude i thought you know rather than make him a bird with robot legs maybe he's a bird that's riding like a pair of robot legs like a bike <laughs> so yeah i'll do something like that <laughs> but this is as like i won't make any of the layers for line after this this is as, this is the line that it's going to be if it's going to be there it's like it's not yeah it's not particularly nice <laughs> i uh I, I kind of came from a came from a traditional um, re real media based sort of illustration background so obviously i didn't have the we didn't really have the sort of the luxury of gazillions of layers and, and no one do button you know it's like the best you could that was a really clean rubber you know to, <laughs> to yeah. have a razor to um so i i tend to not use layers but uh i'm kind of a i, I get a little bit uh um overwhelmed by loads and loads of layers i kind of lose control of it and then i kind of feel like my flow is you know my my sort of my flow is kind of getting you know in the the layers getting in the way of it um I'm, to be fair i'm quite similar i i merge down a hell of a lot yeah and just keep working into it and working into it yeah sometimes it it bites you in the ass but <laughs> more often than not I mean, I'm I'm just as happy to scrap something I've been working on forever if I'm not liking it. I've went days working on something, and then at the end I'm like, well, that's garbage. Why did I spend that long on it? Yeah. yeah. But I'll just just walk away from it, kind of thing. But if you're a student, don't do that, folks. All the work will get get your marks. <laughs> you know, even the stuff that you throw away. Let your let your uh, your tutors see it first before you. <laughs> don't just don't. Uh... Yeah, I'm talking here strictly about personal work. Yeah, by of the course. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We get like, all the time, when it comes it? to when it comes to like design work designing for yourself which is what this is is a lot different from designing uh, for clients although yeah. there's still you can still use the same principles about like proportion and balance and rhythm and all that stuff but it's just you know it's more loose when you're doing it for yourself because you're the art director <laughs> yeah yeah I've got a question for you. There's something I'm, I've been wondering. You've got, um, we've got sort of, uh, we, we put them in the, uh, the Imagine brochure. Um, of just for, for anybody, there's an, there's an Imagine PDF brochure, like a souvenir, uh, you know, uh, program brochure that we'll, we've, we've got to make a couple of changes to, to but we're going to put it on the Discord servers for you so you can download it as a bit of a thing. But one of the things that features in there is some really, really very slick, 3d stuff um how do you sort of when when and how do you sort of translate that across into 3d um and do you find um, it difficult to 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 make that transition for me with 3d the reason i learned 3d i, I mean i do love designing in 3d as well because you get to design an object not like in its entirety yeah <clears throat> is that I don't like painting or anything like that. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, I'll I'll learn 3D and then I can just render things. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so it started as a place of kind of laziness because I don't like rendering at all, as you can tell by my style. 
my all this style as much as it is uh, like i like mike mignola a lot of it just comes down to i'm not a huge fan of of rendering for me as soon as i've found the design of something that's my brain satisfied yeah. and i struggle with the rest of it yeah, yeah so that's another big reason why my style is as loose as it is yeah i've got a i've got a student um i don't know if it has just left recently um if you are watching coco i'm i'm bigging you up here uh, i've got a, a student who's recently graduated and uh we were talking about this kind of, uh, you know, I've for, for many years, and this goes back to the sort of advice I've, I would have given to Amber back in the day is, uh, you know, get get a little bit of 3D under your belt and, you know, get that asset creation pipeline sorted because it's probably, there's a good chance that'll get you that like during your post. Um, but it's like really difficult for some really creative people. And then I've got, they're talking about, specifically about Coco, it was like, Baz, I get all this like asset creation and, uh, you know, all this like high, you know, highly complex materials and stuff. Said, but I just want to draw stuff. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so we negotiated uh, um, a, a final year that was, that was basically driven by the illustrative sort of stuff and not the, you know, we didn't put too much emphasis on the, the final 3D output. Because just as she was just the same, she was like, well, once I've resolved what it is and, you know, I've, I've done a nice drawing of it, um, I don't kind of really want to take that any further. And I was like, well, you know what? You might get that, that gig and you know, you'll get a minion to make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's, if, if you, if you're not really into the 3d pipeline, you know, folks, um, don't like, don't stress about it, you know, get yourself on, um, if you're, if you're a student and you're learning or you're thinking about going to uni, um, or, um, doing some sort of course, Try and try and pick something that's that allows you to you know focus on the stuff that you enjoy and uh, you know find something that's that's you know if you want to be a bit more of a generalist and find you you know your feet do that. Um. I will say that like three D has does help me a lot though because it saves you doing perspective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if you're designing, because I do quite a lot of vehicle design and stuff like that for, for myself and for clients, quite often I will just thumbnail in 3D, you know, just to get a feel for, for forms and things like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, uh, one of, we, we teach, uh, we teach, you know, uh, traditional uh, perspective techniques. Yeah. But we kind of do that as as a boot camp thing, you know. We we really we really hammer our first year students with, um, you know, a traditional art and underpinning art and design theory and things. Surprising yeah. that surprising how much how little that is covered in schools now. Everybody's kind of got a, you know, I don't know. The, the, I don't think art and design is as valued as much as as it used to be. You know. Um, Let me just sort this cat out. <laughs> oh, there's, oh, there's a cat. The cat is as. What's up? <laughs> She's got three legs. Oh my god. <laughs> She's twenty years old. Is, does that, is that a thing? The cats get that Come old. On. She's old, yeah. She's twenty years old. Wow. <laughs> well, I better not get a cat. It'll live longer than me. <laughs> She'll be all right if she's on there. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, boot camp. Um, yeah, that we've been sort of top, top people have been talking about, and I, it was really came across in in Anya's. Um, video about the that underpinning sort of color theory and and shape and form and rest and noise and all that kind of stuff and it's really important and you're touching on it here aren't you with your your proportions you know that kind of yeah thirds kind of thing you're almost into there with your with your um, 70 30 thing don't forget folks yeah three, three is a magic number isn't it does it's like you know <laughs> <laughs> it is and another thing that like i i was never formally taught but i've discovered it a lot um, since starting work is rhythm in design because it's hard to explain but it's incredibly valuable and go it's go on, give it a go. Um, well it's just like imagine like music the way yeah. the, the notes are in music yeah the way you like lay a detail in or break up materials or add even forms to your character 
you can treat it like music and it's all about like let's say you put some de- details up here where else can you mirror that in the design while keeping the same kind of visual function yeah. uh rhythm going through yeah yeah and picking these spots for how to arrange things to keep it um visually interesting yeah oh, this cat's gonna have to go she's getting on my nerves now <laughs> Well, we we like cats. We like cats on live streams. I mean, artists and cats is a thing, isn't it? <laughs> I used to have a cat. See, I'm not. I used to have a cat. I used to sit on right under on the desk in front of my keyboard under my chin and just watch the cursor for hours at a time, moving around the screen. You know, I was totally enthralled <laughs> by it. I can't settle on how I want this dude's legs to look. So this is the dangers of. Uh... Doing something live. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's incredible. I think it, it makes it makes everything real to, to people who are, who are just starting out. That you know that there's when I think Badge touched on this really in his talk. One of the things that I really took away from Badge's talk was this idea that um, you know there is a place for people who are working a more diagrammatic kind of way and they're thinking about function of things. You know, it's actually a design function kind of thing and there's a lot of people get really you go on art station it's extremely intimidating when you see some of this highly just awesome highly rendered stuff um and i don't think people appreciate sort of i don't know it's almost like all this brilliant stuff just flows out of people you know it's just awesome yeah you know you're not born uh you know a, a sort of artist are you? you you learn it and you you play and you practice and to be able to see you doing this live it's like, oh look, this is a human being who kind of changes their mind and makes mistakes and you know plays around with things. Um, yeah, I'll like as as rough and ready as these drawings take. Some of them will have taken three or four hours, <laughs> even though they look incredibly simple. Right. Because I'll, I'm constantly the tweaking proportion and placement of details and things like that. Do you find when you when you translate into three D that you do you enjoy do you enjoy those kind of really super high highly noisy details on your surfaces or do you do you like that? No. Like that? I'm all about simplicity. Yeah, yeah, and it's taken me quite a long time to learn that. I I do think that less if if you can get across what a design is all about in as simple a way as possible. Yeah. It makes it way more elegant and it makes it way more memorable. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a good exercise. And I do this quite often is design something and then see how much you can just keep stripping out and stripping out and stripping out of that design. Yeah. But while making sure that it still works and it still registers. Yeah, I mean, we, um, got, we saw that with Sean's uh, two uh, tank, you know, he's uh, armored patrol yeah. cars how he managed to sort of distill that essence down into that sort of, uh, you know, more simple um, or elegant, you could say, sort of style. Yeah. And I think it's absolutely key. I mean, one of the, thing, one of the things that um, that I, I kind of discovered that when I, when I was doing like, I started out like doing graphic design and logo type, you know, actually designing corporate ID type stuff, you know, logos and things. And when you first start out, you want to throw the kitchen sink at it, don't you? You get very literal and you throw loads of things at it. And yeah. That, all the all the high high levels of detail is going to really impress everybody, but it's that overall form and mass and and color and you know you, the the rest can get really if you get let everything get really super noisy, um, you know you can't read the things sometimes can you? You've got to keep your silhouettes yeah. fairly simple as well. And there are a few artists who get away with it and do it really well. Yeah, but it's for me it's yeah. I'm drawn to the more simpler, almost graphic stuff, to be honest. I think one is what things, I like. Yeah, one of the things that that's interesting about high levels of detail, especially in a in a in a, in a game context, is that um, view distance. So if you've got something that's like really really highly detailed, like you might have some armor and it's got lots of etching and beautiful sort of designs sort of scratched into it. Once you get sort of past a certain view distance, that disappears anyway. So you're almost the view distance can add simplicity to the design. 
So I think sometimes yep. you can get away with it. So you know you're gonna you get close up on that character, and it all kind of comes into view. But you kind of back off a little bit, and it just flattens itself out. And then you've got that overall form and sort of color value and shading that that sort of there you know left behind, it, which is I think pretty key. I mean, you know, one of the things that drives me crackers is um, sorry, a bit of a northern uh, phrase there being drove crackers. Um, <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who are not, not in the UK, I hope I hope you can understand what we're talking about. <laughs> we might we might have to get them subtitles going, Dos. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, um, the this whole idea of view distance and uh, and simplicity, you know, you, you you've just got to nail that, haven't you? If I, I was what I was going to say is, I remember buying the Bioshock art book. You know that, that it was like the deluxe di- um, edition of Bioshock. And the, yeah. char- the character designs were so awesome in the book. When I got in the game, you, you, they just didn't. They didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not dissing anybody here because they're fantastic designs. But in sometimes in in real time, when something's chasing you and is about to chop your head off, you know you don't get to see that stuff, do you? You know, I kind of want to put yeah, it in don't. sort of bullet mode so I can get to enjoy the art inside the game. Right, I'm struggling now. I'll explain why I'm struggling. <laughs> It's not like a drawing thing. It's just, it's quite a lot of repetition going on of shapes that are like this kind of size. Yeah, yeah. All around the same area. Yeah. And I feel like it needs to be broken up. Mm. I don't know, I may. One of the things that um, a lot of artists do at this point is they'll actually, they'll make that copy and save iterations of stuff. Do you ever do that? Are you always working over, working on, you know, working over the top of what you've done? Is that just how you do it? You just dig in? Yeah. And, yeah. Generally, yeah. And then Photoshop freezes and dies, I think. Yeah. I, I'd say st- <laughs> if you're a student and you're uh, you're developing your, your concept and stuff, do do get, make copies of what you've done. Show, so, show how your design decisions are changing and think about um, think about the stuff that you decided not to do and talk about why, because one of the things that that's really important here when you want to sort of prove yourself as somebody who th- you know thinks very carefully about the work, is to um, is talk about the mistakes and talk about why you change your mind and how you resolved the problems. Um, this is something that you know we're, you really uh, is really interesting about the art and design process. Is a lot of the the thought is not ex- when you've got somebody like uh, Daz that's drawing something and talking about his work. It's just so insightful, you know. You're getting into the mind of somebody while they're doing the drawing, um, and if you're going to do that in a report, send you know send something off to an external examiner. You've kind of kind of be quite explicit about it and try and capture that. Um, so what we're going to do here, Daz? What what you're going to? Luckily, the rest of it's working quite well, to the point where I can start to throw some color in, and then I'll see if my brain catches up. Which is something I'll do instead of just dwelling on one thing for a long time. Yeah, because then this color, the color will immediately just dictate where I start to shadow stuff as well. And the coloring is like so simple. (laughs) Although this is starting to lag a little now. See, I like this red. I've used red along a lot of these characters as a little accent, but um. Like with the monkey's waistcoat thing, I'm starting to use it a little bit more boldly. 